Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to the show. I am super excited to dive into today's conversation with Heather Lottinen from Flourish Academy. Now, if Heather was a superhero, she would be a Wolverine. With her gleaming talents, she'll shred your self-limiting beliefs, bring you not only to dream big, but to achieve massive success too. While it seems like giant finger blades would be incompatible with a keyboard, Heather's also an Adobe certified expert in Photoshop. No stranger to teaching, she's helping students with learning photography and growing their business for years and is the founder of Flourish Academy. As a hobby, she collects certifications around mindset work to help her students break through to the next level. Although she comes from the world of wedding and portrait photography, Heather works with photographers in all niches. Without further ado, here is Heather. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Lisa. I'm really excited to be here today. I am so excited. I'm so excited to have you. Now, can you maybe share who you are and really what you're super duper passionate about? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm actually celebrating 20 years of being in business. I started my photography business in 2003. I photographed a little bit of everything and then really focused in on weddings for most of my career and also started teaching very early on. So like, let me give you an example. Do you remember when Lightroom was released for the first time? It was actually... 2007 was when they came out with the beta version. Actually, the same year as the iPhone. Isn't that interesting? The iPhone. Isn't and, it? Yeah, 2007 was a big year. So <laughs> I started teaching Lightroom in 2007 because there was no training for it. Yeah. So like we we didn't know how to, there, there weren't any online courses. There's and actually, nothing. I think that's the U- time YouTube was launched as well, around that yes. same time. Yes. So that, that was a big year. And I was teaching... Photoshop already. I, I had a certification in Photoshop. I was teaching Lightroom, but I didn't have any like anything to go. I actually, I actually per- purchased. It was free. Lightroom was free in alpha version before it was released in beta. Started teaching and started mentoring and loved that. And then for a large portion of my career was doing both. And now I focus mainly on teaching photographers. So I have an academy where you can learn photography and posing in Lightroom and Photoshop and all the basics around the craft. And I also have a business program where I help photographers start and grow their business. And one of my absolute favorite things to do is help people make money pursuing their passion and their dream and their love for photography, because I think that gives them amazing freedom in their lives. Absolutely. I love that so much. I think it's so needed too, because it's so, we were talking before we got started and I think what's so important and what people don't really realize is how important it is to your success and growth to have a running mate and a mentor and how, like we were talking a little bit, how I was saying, you know, it's been a little while since I've had a mentor and how you can start to feel aimless. And so having that accountability and having that coach just to help you guide you in the direction that, and when they know what your dreams are and they know what your goals are, they can help you along the way. So I absolutely love that. And I have been hearing about you of amazing things for years. So I'm super excited just to dive into our conversation today. Thank you so much. You know, I will never be without a mentor or business coach or someone, someone in my corner that can help me. In fact, I had a conversation with my business coach a few days ago that was like, like mind blowing. Like the, I had yeah. such a breakthrough talking with her and I thought, oh my gosh, I, it's just so important to have someone that you can talk to, to run your ideas by, yeah. see where you might be holding yourself back or maybe what's next for you. So that's something I actually really yeah. recommend for photographers is to find a person or a group yeah. of persons that you can connect with and learn from uh, just, just to help with your next steps in your journey. Yeah, I love that. Now, can you share your approach a little bit on how you mentor photographers really to get out of their own way? Because I think a lot of the time we can really experience that place of stuck when we're not serving the clients we want to serve, we're not charging enough, and we end up feeling kind of embarrassed about that and really just not sure how to change things. So how do you work with your mentees to work past this? Yeah, I actually get this a lot. People come to me and they say, Heather, I just feel really stuck. And I'll say, okay, what have you tried? And they'll either say one or two things or nothing. And I'll say, then where are we stuck? If we haven't haven't tried anything, you have to, you know, you have to be able to articulate. Where do you feel stuck specifically? So for instance, when you say like, um, you know, we're not serving the clients we want to serve or charging it up. 
I would, I would start to ask about that. You know, yep. where can we look at your ideal client? Have we thought about your target market? Is there somewhere in your business where you need to make a decision? Because that's mm -hmm. often what's holding people back is they, they don't want to make a, what they would consider a wrong decision. So they want to make the right one. And so they hold themselves back and just making a decision can get you unstuck yeah. no matter how small. And I like to tell everyone that there's no such thing as right or wrong decisions. There are just choices yeah. that you make. And if the choice isn't the best in that time, then you make another choice and you continue yeah. to move forward. But I think another important aspect of this is to ask yourself in a perfect world, what would I want my business to look like? So paint a vision for what you could imagine your business to look like in terms of types of clients, what you're shooting, your genre or your niche, how much you're making, how much you're working. So balancing, I know you just had an episode about boundaries, balancing mm -hmm. your family life and your business life, because that can get um, yeah, a little indistinct when you're, mm -hmm. when you're doing both. But I think I would ask someone, you know, where do you feel stuck specifically yeah. and what, what's the bigger vision for your business? Yeah, I love that. I think it's so important. And I love that you mentioned about the importance of making a decision because it's so funny because my husband and I, we've been talking a little bit about buying a new motorhome mm. and like we're upgrading and I have discovered that I don't want to be responsible for the decision. Oh, interesting. Why? What do you uh -huh. think is going on? Well, I was like, I will, cause I think if like, if I make the wrong decision and I was like, I feel I put so much pressure that I'm going to make the wrong decision that I will kind of just defer mm. responsibility of it. And I was mm. like, interesting, Lisa. So where else are you doing this in your business? <gasps> oh my gosh. Life, right. What a great insight. Like, and it's so true. It's like, if you, if you, if you like, if I, if, like, I just don't want to be responsible for making it wrong. And I'm like, but like, what's the worst case that can happen? If you take, if you make a wrong decision, just like you said, pivot Undo and do it. Ask <laughs> yourself, is the decision reversible? Yes. So if the decision is reversible or like you can change it, then there is no reason to hesitate. Just yeah. go. Like if you purchased the wrong motorhome, could you yeah. like, sell I don't it. know how that works. Could you return <laughs> just sell it? it. Ah, yeah, just sell it. Sell. I don't know. Yeah. Just yeah. Like, it's like, you know, it's so silly. Like, but then you, like, I just get in my head so much mm. that it's like, oh, and you get this analysis paralysis mm. where you're just like, mm -hmm. you keep analyzing and analyzing and, and it's like, at some point you just got to just make the decision and like, deal with the consequences of it in a good or bad way, or like just move on. I feel like yeah. you're probably pretty good at this because you run a very successful business. <laughs> so you must, how did yeah. you, how did you, how did you break through that? You know, honestly, we just talked it out and, and we just said, okay, well, if we, if we choose this, this means X, Y, Z, we can't do, or we can do these things. And we made a pros and cons list. Mm. And then we kind of just came at it together instead of me feeling like it was solely my responsibility. It was something that we did collectively for our family and our family team. And it felt a lot easier mm. than just putting all that pressure on myself. Mm. Um, with my, with my company, with, with Milky Way, I do have a business partner as well. So I think that we, we kind of approach it that way as well, that it's a, it's a collaborative decision. When I'm working on my milk and honey photography business though, it is solely me. And I mm. do find that because I'm not balancing my ideas or I am not getting the feedback on, you know, what I'm ruminating on, I take a lot longer to make decisions. Mm. So then I think that comes back to mentorship and like, maybe that's where I need to be seeking some hmm. form of a, a business coach there. where you can yeah. run things by. Yeah. You know what I love about your business? <laughs> I love the play on words with milk and honey photography. And then you created the Milky Way. Milky like, Way. How perfect is that? <laughs> how did you come up with that? It's so oh, creative. That's so funny. Thank you. That was, well, cause I was milk and honey. And then my, my business partner, I was doing her maternity session. She was a former, um, uh, photographer as well. And it was like, we had a first date. It was like, you know, when you have like a girl crush and you're super smitten with mm -hmm. this friend that you just met and you're like, you know, you're going to do amazing things together. You just don't know what yet. And she was laughing. She's like, you know, we should, you should create like some form of like online education, um, and call it the Milky way. Cause it's your way. And I was like, well, girl, I don't have the time to do that. I'm like only if we're 50, 50 business partners and you come do it with me. And then the 12 years later, we're still rolling. <gasps> That's how yeah. I got started. Just yeah. that conversation. Yeah. But you were, you were <laughs> actually like very early on in this whole online education space, because if I remember correctly in, in 2012, that it really wasn't a thing. 
No, there was there was really no resources. There was especially in the maternity newborn genre, there mm-hmm. really there was maybe 10 really well-known newborn photographers at that time. And you'd have to fly to go to their right. workshops. Yes. And like to be honest, that was the first time I had ever been away from my son. He was about 9 months old. Mm. And so I flew to California, went to a workshop, and honestly, I was so full of anxiety being away from my baby that I can't say that I really took away a huge amount from that workshop because I was in such an emotional state hmm. being away from him that I don't really retain, I didn't really retain much in the way of information. And at the time we really couldn't video on our phones because we really didn't have, it wasn't a thing. Phones. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have video on our phones. Right. So, um, so I came home going, okay, that was about $8,000 that I just spent. And oh, gosh. I was, okay. mm-hmm. I was a little bit horrified that, you know, maybe I lost, um, my money and that broke my heart. And I, I talked to Aaron and I was like, I never want another photographer to feel this way. I want them to be able to be able to learn at their own pace and on their own schedule in their own home and go back and be able to rewatch it over and over and over and over. And so then we're like, okay, well, let's create our first product, which was, um, illuminate, which is a studio lighting class. And then after that, it's just kind of grown and, my biggest tip is just keep going. Don't give up when the days are hard. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. That was so, that was so brilliant though. You were really, truly a pioneer at that time because, and the reason I know this is because I found you around the time that you had started and I was not teaching newborn photography and I had sent people to you online you. because it was like, she's teaching it online. What is happening? This is the craziest thing. That was amazing. Oh, uh, it was the wild west, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like everything was the wild west on the internet. But like, isn't it funny now? Don't you think like you probably had to cobble systems? I mean, I know I did. Mm -hmm. I started teaching online in 2014 and I I had to cobble systems together. And don't you feel like now it's like so easy. There's so many new applications and systems. It's well, even, even the leaps and bounds that we're watching our photographer students make when Mm. it comes to becoming better artists, business people, and their art, like the things that were taking us like years to master and to, and to get to, we're seeing it happen within weeks and months, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which I, which I just find incredible. And like mama bear pride. Like I'm sure you feel that too. Like when you see those transformations happen so quickly for your students, you're just like, this is why I'm doing this. Yeah, like, it's amazing. Just, right? Yeah. yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, I love it. It's incredible. I love it. That's great. So I'm going to switch gears. I want to talk about limiting beliefs because I know that I have a kajillion, but <laughs> I we all do. About- <laughs> yeah. I want to talk about maybe finding the limiting beliefs that maybe we're not aware of because I think it's pretty impossible to change something that you're really not even conscious of. So can you maybe share your advice with our listeners on how they can go and start discovering their own limiting beliefs? That is so well said. How in the world could you change something like that you're not even aware of? How do you know? How do you uncover? You don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And this is where a really good group or coach can come in very handy. So when I'm talking with a new one-on-one client or someone in our Elevate program, which is for photographers growing a business, I ask them some questions. So I ask them things like, what do you believe is possible for you? And if you, mm. if you present that question to someone and you just let them talk for a few minutes, you'll probably hear, I don't know, maybe 55 limiting beliefs. <laughs> yeah, You'll just be able to pick up on them and you'll be able to show them, oh, that's so interesting. You just said that that's not possible in your area. Tell me more about your market or what you think might or might not be possible in your market. You know, someone might look at your newborn photography and think, well, yeah, that works for Lisa because she's yeah. in this market. That won't work for me. You know, and but through conversation yeah. with another person, I think it's very difficult to uncover these on your own. You, yeah. you can. I mean, yeah. I've uncovered a few of my own by asking these questions. But if you have someone to present you with, you know, what do you believe is possible for you? What do you believe about your ability to create what you want. Mm-hmm. What do you want? Have you even yeah. thought about that? What, why do you think you have the current results that you have? Oftentimes people are coming to me because they have not reached a result or uh, obtained something that they're trying to achieve. So I'll ask them, well, why do you have these current results and why haven't you reached that yet? And again, the conversation will open up a litany of limiting beliefs or, or even just, yeah. they might not even be limiting beliefs, maybe just thoughts mm. that are preventing them for moving forward. And then I'll ask them things like, 
what do you need to believe to get the results that you want? You know, if you want to make six figures in your photography business, for instance, what do you need to believe to get those results? Well, I think, first of all, you need to believe that, that it can happen in your market, yes. right? If you, if you don't think that can happen in your area or that can happen for you or how you're going to create products that even add up to six figures, well, then we're never going to reach that. Yeah. So we have to understand what's happening there. And then I ask, you know, what do you need to believe? to get the results. And why don't you believe that yet? What thoughts get in the way? Yeah. So I just ask a series of questions to understand their thoughts and what they're thinking. And then I help them to see those thoughts. You know, it's like, I always say my job is to take what's in my client's brain and just show it to them. Yeah. They, because they, they can't see it. Like you said, it's unconscious. So I love it. If You're I like take... a thought archaeologist. I love it. Oh my it. gosh. Wait a minute. I never thought of that. You're so clever. Okay. That's going to be my new tag. I'm writing a new bio. And instead of my blades and talons, I'm going to be talking about mining somebody's brain. I love that. That's great. I love it. You're discovering all the treasures and uh, yeah. the things you need to let go of. But I, what I love too is like, we are like, we forget that we don't have to believe all the thoughts that we think. That's it. And that we're the thinker of the thoughts, oh, right? Yes. Yes. Don't believe everything you think. That's mm -mm. what I tell people. No. And your thoughts and are lies. It. And the yeah. liars, right? They're just yes. trying to keep you safe, right? Correct. Yes. Yep. I'm like for years, I remember thinking like, my clients will never pay that. My clients will never pay that. And then it's like, well, maybe those clients won't pay that, but some clients will. Maybe that we, can, is, can we choose that thought? Oh, and how <laughs> right? would that feel? If you choose right? it, like if you think that people won't pay that, how does that feel? awful. Yeah. It feels stuck. It feels like you're stuck. in, you put, your, you put yourself in this little box that you can't get out. Mm. Right. And then right. when you, yeah, when you like, well, some people will, will pay that. You're like, Oh, open the lid. <laughs> you feel hopeful. Exactly. Yes. You feel hopeful. Like there's possibility. Yeah. But sometimes I actually, I think that's a very common one is a lot of people say, I don't think that people will pay that or not for me or not in my market. And I just, I just want to question that. Like, how do you, how do we know that? Have we tried it? And if it's working for someone else, why couldn't it work mm -hmm. for you? So I believe that we have like unlimited potential yeah. and, and capability. Absolutely. If we just get out of our own way. What I think is fascinating is like a lot of the time you have to see it to believe it. Mm. And so my, my like homework to our listeners or someone who maybe is having that thought would be like, go se search out someone in your area. Because I assure you, there is someone in your area that is charging like X, Y, Z dollars that you dream of having and go and see that it is possible, mm -hmm. right? Because it is mm -hmm. like, I remember thinking that for years and then this boudoir photographer, Roz, she's incredible, popped up and she's just charging like $5,000 a session and she is booked to the nines. Huh. And then after that, I was like, oh, it's possible. It's possible in my area. These are the same, these would be the same clients that would book a newborn session and a maternity session at right. that level, right? That's right. So I would like, your brain's just a trickster. Hey, <laughs> let me ask you though, what do you think about those circumstances where you can't find someone like, like, okay, perfect. You, yeah, you were the pioneer in putting newborn photography online training. You I don't think, did you, I mean, you didn't really have an example of how I didn't, that we work. didn't have an example. So what did you do? How did you do that? Like, how did you break through? Like, this is possible. We can make this work and it can be pretty awesome. <laughs> I think it was honestly like a trust fall with the universe. Mm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Honestly, I think it was just at the point where my business partner, were, we were like, this would be fun. Mm. And I think when we approached it with a delight and a hope and if, and actually not even a thought that we were going to fail. We were just like, well, we're going to do something and something's going to happen. And if something happens, that's amazing. It doesn't matter if it's 10 students or 2000 students, like something's going to happen and it's going to be incredible. And I think because we went in with that, um, curiosity, curiosity, and maybe mm -hmm. there wasn't a whole lot of fear around it. There was more of just like, what do it matter what we're going to do? We were going to learn something. Mm -hmm. So let's just try it. I think that's great for people who maybe want to try something different or new. Right. If they cannot find the proof in their area, that yep. you can just drop into a belief that I'm going to get really curious. I'm going to have yep. fun. And if this works out, great. And if not, I'll learn something and I'll do something else. Like there's, there's nothing on the line here. I always tell my clients, you are not going to get mauled by a bear. No. If you put some newborn videos online, right? No. <laughs> I mean, no. you'll just, you'll figure something out and it will just be fun. 
The only bear you're going to get mauled by is one in your head. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. right. So Absolutely. Let's chat, let's chat a little bit about burnout because burnout is such a real thing in our industries. And I know our listeners and truth be told, I also have like extreme burnout periods where the last thing I want to do is work on my business. So what advice do you have maybe for avoiding even getting into burnout? Oh my gosh, this is so crazy that you're bringing this up because I just recently did a training on this and I don't know if it's like this for newborns. I would assume not, but do you guys have a busy season? Like family photographers are so busy in the fall. I would say newborns are typically year round. And I, I would say like for me, I tip, I've always taken summers off. So I try mm. to just like load my, my spring and my fall. Mm -hmm. um, and other than that, I take off usually December and I take off July and August because I amazing. need to be my, my human. So yeah, that's amazing. First of all, congratulations Thanks. on setting those boundaries. <laughs> So I, w I was working with a bunch of senior and wedding portrait mm. family type photographers last fall. And they, <laughs> they came to this call, Lisa, like glassy eyed and just so burned out. Yeah. And I said, Hey, maybe we should talk about this and explore yeah. this a little further. So, uh, I said, I have five ways that you can look at this. Number one is you need to acknowledge that it's a problem. Mm. If you are exhausted, just admit it and don't say things like I'll be okay, or this is just temporary. Well, it is just temporary, but you know, just acknowledge this is an issue for you. Secondly, ask yourself, why is this behavior repetitive? Yeah. Because my guess is that people who are burnt out tend to do it repetitively before they figure out sort of how to unlock the secret to yeah. preventing it. At least that was the case for me. I yeah. was, I was burnt out for a couple of years before I woke up, you know, I was just like, <laughs> yeah. I was just working and working and working. And then like, oh, I need to do something about this. Thirdly, I think people should set their schedule and determine their priorities ahead of time by scheduling their free time first, mm -hmm. like you just mentioned. And it's funny you say that about December, because one of the first things I did early on in my business after being burnt out was I scheduled December off. I said, I'm not, I had mm -hmm. small children at the time and I wanted to participate in the magic of Christmas. I wanted to bake cookies. I wanted yeah. to go to Santa's workshop and do all of the things. But typically I was just exhausted and I was like getting last minute orders out. So that year I decided I'm going to, yeah. whatever it takes, I'm going to protect December. So schedule your free time first, but also know your values ahead of time so that you can make decisions quickly. So for example, I always say, I know what I want. I know who I am. I know what I want. All of my decisions are made before I encounter them. Yeah. So if you know what, if you know that, you know, your kids have activities and those are really important to you, then obviously that's the priority. And you're going to mark those things off on your calendar. And when, and if there's a conflict, you'll do your best to change it or occasionally, you know, things yeah. just come up. But if you know who you are and what you want your business to look like, and you have that vision, all of those decisions should be made ahead of time because we get ourselves into trouble by making decisions, like reacting to someone needs something. And that leads right into my number four, which is pause before you commit and ask yourself, why do I feel the need to say yes in this moment when I know I should be saying no? <laughs> So if you're setting your schedule, like newborns, I, I, I would assume book, what, what's typical, like three, Usually, six months? I would say three to four months in advance for me. Okay. Yeah. So you know, you know, several months ahead of time what yep. your schedule looks like. Yep. How, how many were like in your busiest season, what were you most comfortable taking or where did you cross a line? I should say <laughs> oh, probably about 15 newborns plus wow. family sessions a month. So I was shooting oh, probably lot. around 40 sessions a month. Uh, on top of um, other things. Yeah. I was a, I'm a reformed people pleaser and wait, that means you're working <laughs> every day and yeah. sometimes twice a day you're shooting. Oh yeah. And then off all night editing and like, yeah, it yeah, was, a hot, to keep up. It, it was right. a hot mess. <laughs> what, what do you think was driving that behavior? Um, the need for recognition and mm. the need for, um, to feel relevant and popular. Mm. It was just this, mm -hmm. um, this need that I wasn't being fulfilled internally, I think. And I think once I, I said, okay, like I can pass the torch. It doesn't really matter. Guess what? Like I'm still an amazing photographer. I can mm. do less of it. And 
It's okay. People still like me. People and it's still, still gonna okay. like me. Yeah, and like maybe the less of me that I show is like better. Better. Maybe it's more special because it's <gasps> so infrequent. Wow. <laughs> right. So you just reframed it. Yeah, after Pretty being much. exhausted, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically, I I wanted to throw my camera in the river, and yeah. I was just done. And I kind of just got to the point that the pain of staying mm. um, outweighed the change, the pain mm-hmm. of change, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, and and that's sometimes you just got to get to that point to move on. I think you're right. Sometimes you right? don't know what your capacity is till you cross Mm-mm. the line, which yes. leads perfectly to my final point, number five, which is schedule your time off and honor yes. that commitment to yourself and trust yourself. Trust yourself. You don't have to take on every newborn in your city. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there are other photographers that will, I, I used to think, you know, from wedding, from a wedding standpoint, I can't possibly photograph all of the weddings in Pittsburgh. Yeah. That's where I live. So uh, it's Okay. Yeah. To say no and maybe have a Saturday off in the summer. I yeah. just really struggled with that. I would typically take any Saturday I could because I thought, well, weddings are only on Saturdays and they're only in the summer. Yeah. I better make hay when the sun shines, you know. Yeah. I have this crazy work ethic, which serves me, but also drives me into the ground. Yeah. It's, I like, honestly, as a wedding photographer, I don't know how you did it with weekends. Oh, like, it was something. <laughs> and especially with, like, little ones and stuff, yes. too. Like, and when they start to be, ch- like school age and you're just like, Oh my gosh, like, yeah, it was challenging. I, I thought, well, it's okay. This is what I signed up for. I love weddings and they're on Saturdays and that's great. And when the kids were really little, it was okay. They went with my parents. They had fun adventures Mm -hmm. and I thought it would get easier as they got older, but it was the opposite. It actually got harder because of what you just said. They started to have things and then I started to miss things. And for many years, I was perfectly fine with that. I would miss birthday parties, graduation parties, retirements, everything. But the first year I missed a funeral, Oof. I was yeah. like, what is happening? I mean, yeah. you know, when somebody hired weddings by Heather, they wanted Heather, right? Yeah. So um, I, f- I photographed the wedding on the day of a funeral and, oh, that was, yeah. that was rough. I just didn't see any way around that. Weddings are a yeah. commitment, you know, like a newborn, you could hopefully maybe, you could bump tomorrow. a little bit. Yeah. 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 But weddings don't work that way. So yeah. yeah. And I worked all those Saturdays and I loved it. And then it just, yeah, it wasn't my favorite anymore to yeah. commit all my Saturdays. So I just, you know how, I, you know how I slowed down. I raised the prices yep. significantly. Significantly. <laughs> I know. <laughs> And that was I'm fun. like, I've quadrupled, I, well, I'm on a sabbatical this year, but I've, I've redone my website and I've quadrupled my pricing. So, so if we'll they call, happens. yeah, we'll happens. you're happy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. Perfect. But I'm not shooting this year anyway. So it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> what, well, okay. So if, so if somebody does, what will you do? Well, if I really want to shoot right now, I, my, it's, I don't want to do it for money. I don't want to do it Mm. as my photography business right now. If Mm. what I've actually done is I've created a model call list and so they can get on my model call list. And if I need a model for whatever educational content I get to create at this time, then I get, it's like a win-win, right? So then I get images, but then I still control what I'm doing and how I'm using the material and my time. So right now that's just where I'm at. So, oh my gosh, you're so yeah. smart. That's a really, really <laughs> smart approach. So you're able to sort of still offer your services to people, but in a way that works for you. Yeah. Yeah. And what I'm really finding though, too, is, um, I'm able to, it's, it's just different because there's a, you get a, like, I have my clients or my models tell me the reason why I should be picking them. And so you hear all these incredible stories. And like, pick yes. me, pick me. And yeah. I'm just like, oh my God, can I pick everybody? Cause my oh. heart, right? So, right. and then, so I've got, um, someone else helping me. Of course. Those, because yeah. yeah. <laughs> Otherwise I so do you yes were, to everybody. <laughs> would you refer out or do you have an associate? Absolutely. No, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think it's really so important, um, to be able to refer locally and mm-hmm. because we're all like, there's not there's room for everybody. Right. Like there's room for everybody. Like I wish everybody like massive success. And I'm sure you do too. Like it's, it's not a competition. We can all win and the table's big enough. We'll mm. just pull up extra chairs. Like it's mm. all good. 
I love that. So yeah, I think community and collaboration is so, so I important. Agree. And mm -hmm. it's like when the, we started in the industry, it was not like that. It like, it really <gasps> felt dog eat dog, right? Cutthroat. Yes. <laughs> yes, it yes. was. Yeah. And the funny thing was, there was only like 10 of us. I don't even yeah. know how we were managing all of these weddings. <laughs> like it's, it's crazy, right? Yeah. And yeah, I know. I just, my, I really feel like hopefully at the end of my career in the photography industry, I have left it better than I found it. Oh my gosh. So, right? Oh, oh my, my gosh. Lisa, listen to my number one rule. My number one rule is to leave people better than I found them. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I talk it. about it all the time. I yes. say, leave people better than you found them. That's yes. what, that's exactly. And I love the way you said that just about the community and the industry as a whole, even if you were to step out, you would leave it better than you found it. Love right. that. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, well, thank you. So let's talk about overwhelm. Because mm. that's a huge topic we hear from our listeners. And so what advice do you have maybe for moving through overwhelm and actually taking action? Oh my gosh. Number one, <laughs> I do not permit anyone in my groups to use the word overwhelm. <laughs> and here's why. Overwhelm <laughs> suggests that you are about to have some sort of neurological meltdown or incident. Like overwhelm is complete shutdown of the system. And the only thing that you can do is like go in a dark room for days, you know, and yeah. do nothing to recover. So, um, I always ask people if they could please rephrase that. Yeah. And so then they'll usually say stress and I'll mm -hmm. say, okay, I can, I can, we can manage with that word. So I drop the word. So stop you. Actually, I have many certifications in different modalities for life coaching and two of which are NLP Neuro linguistic programming yes. and CBT, cognitive behavior therapy. And this really matters. Yeah. So it's not just like, oh, don't use the word over. No, it's like, really, don't use that word. Because the one time I used that word, I literally ended up having a seizure <gasps> and was like, I woke up to paramedics working on me yeah. in my closet of my home. My son had to call 911. I was unresponsive. And, and I woke up and she's like working on me. And I'm like, I think I shut down. <laughs> Oh my God. The system just said, mm, yeah, reset, yes! reboot. The system shut down. So I oh. tell my clients, cause many of my clients were with me. I oh mean, like, gosh. you know, metaphorically with me in my, in my classes when that happened a few years ago, I actually had a brush in my hair. Um, because I, you know, I have standards. I was brushing my hair before I melt down, but, um, <laughs> I, so I, I say to them, I'm like, unless you're on the floor seizing out, I don't yeah. want to hear the word overwhelm. So stop using yeah. it. So then, okay. They'll say, well, I'm feeling stressed and I'll say, okay, I'm, I'm just curious. Are you stressed or you, do you just have a lot of things to do? Mm. And they'll say, well, yeah, I have a lot to do. I have so many things to do. You have no idea. I, you know, I wear all of these hats. I have to do all of these things and they'll just rattle off a million things. And I'll say to them, okay, what, what exactly do you have to do? Like, just tell me like high level, what are they? And I actually worked with a client on this just a few days ago. She gave me four things, four. And I was like, um, did you know it was four or, and she said, oh my gosh, no, I thought it was like a million. And I said, how does that feel to know you have four things? Not so a minute ago, you're like, I'm in complete overwhelm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to shut down. And I'm like, do you have four things to do? And she laughed. Yeah. That's where you had said this earlier. Like your, your brain is just going to, I always say your brain is going to brain like a verb, like it's yes, going to brain on you. It brains, yeah. yeah. It's going to just catastrophize everything because you're feeling stressed out because you have a lot to do. Okay. So I wonder if you just said that, if you just said, I have a lot to do. Okay. Welcome to being a human. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Everybody has a lot to do, but yeah. your thoughts about how much you have to do dictate your feelings. So if you're thinking I'm an overwhelm, your body shuts down, you end up on the floor as I have proven. But if you say to yourself, oh, I have a lot to do and I trust myself and I'm managing it. And this is a busy season. And guess what? Seasons change. Mm -hmm. So it's always going to be temporary. So I tell myself I am at peace with this season because I know it is temporary. So you look at your schedule, uh, the client I was working with yesterday, she like had to prove it to me. She's like, no, Heather, seriously, Heather, look at my schedule. She pulled up her calendar to, to prove to me. And I said, okay, that's this week. What about next week? And she's like, oh, it's not as bad. And I'm like, oh, so you have to get through a week. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what, what's with all the arm waving and the yeah. catastrophizing about yeah. so drop the use of the word and just acknowledge that. And by the way, when you're an entrepreneur, especially there's always going to be things to do. Like it's never done. No. 
So what if that was just okay? And what if there actually wasn't a problem here? What if it was just like, okay, yeah, I have a lot to do this week or this season, whether that's yep. a month or a couple of months, like for senior and wedding photographers, there's a season. Okay, yep. it's busy and then it won't be busy and everything everything works itself out. So yep. maybe just tell yourself a different story about what that yeah. means. And so then instead of shutting down, you just say, okay, well, I have a lot to do, so maybe I should just get it done. <laughs> maybe I should just get to work <laughs> right. instead of lamenting about it. <laughs> right. Right. Because right. you're just indulging in your overwhelm or your, your well, stress, oh my gosh. right? <laughs> That's actually something we learned in coach training was like, when people say overwhelm, they're indulging in it. That's exactly yeah. what they said. And yeah. it's an indulgent emotion because it makes you feel justified. Like, oh, my, I have all these mm -hmm. things you don't understand. I'm just overwhelmed. Yeah. I just won't permit the word. I'm overwhelmed. So I will sp scroll on TikTok for That's five it. hours mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to indulge in that. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> right. Right. And I get why we do it. We want to yeah. escape the stress. Yeah. But, but that's because of how we're labeling it. Yeah. And if we didn't use that label and we just said, oh yeah, look, my schedule's busy this week. I have a lot to do. Oh, yeah. I've never been so grateful and so alive. You know what, Lisa, I look at my schedule. I have it printed right here. I print it every week. And I think this is the privilege of a lifetime mm -hmm. that I get to be able to help all of these people. And is it busy? Yeah. And yeah. I'm alive and it's yeah. fun and it keeps me active. I mean, what's the alternative? You, you yeah. don't want anything on your schedule? You, you don't want anybody to depend on you? That yeah. doesn't sound fun. To That's me. not fun. Mm -mm. No. And mm -mm. even like adding in like your escape time into your schedule. So you like, you have your time to aimlessly scroll, but you only have like maybe 25 minutes to do it. Yes. <laughs> like, Set some boundaries for yourself. <laughs> right. 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 So can you share with us your number one secret to growing your business that no one talks about? Oh my gosh. I love this. <laughs> I came up with this. Well, let me back up and say that when I started mentoring photographers early on, I was really curious because I would have two photographers that were both really talented and one would succeed and one wouldn't. Mm. And I couldn't quite understand that. And then I started to notice that there were some photographers that were, that were good, but they would do really well. And then I'd, I would meet a photographer who was like an exceptional artist and struggle. And I just couldn't make sense of this in my mm. head, Lisa. I was like, yeah. well, if you're good, you should be successful, period. But they weren't. So I really started to dive in like, what's going on there? And I came up with a training I call the belief triad. And it's a triangle. And there are three things that I know you have to have in place to run a successful business. And the reason I, I'll, I'll know if somebody doesn't have this is because they're not getting the results that they want. Mm. So if you don't have the results that you want, it's in one of these three belief categories. It's either your belief in yourself, your belief in your product or service, or your belief in your client. So these mm. are on the triangle, yes. you as a photographer, your product and service, and your client. If you have all of those in alignment, things will be so much easier <sighs> for you. But if you're, if you, for instance, don't believe, well, my gosh, if you don't believe in you, what, how in the world is anyone else going to believe in yep. you? And why would I hire an insecure photographer who says, oh, I'm just new. I'm yep. just new. I'm not that good yet. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. What? Why yep. would I hire you? And by the way, I don't think people are saying that out loud. No, but it doesn't matter. Because if you're saying it to yourself or if you believe it, it comes out in everything that you share in your marketing. Yeah. So you have to have that unwavering belief in yourself, your product and service. But let me tell you something. It was so interesting. When I was putting together this training, I was like, <laughs> this is embarrassing. This is not, this is not shed good light on me. Cause I, I thought, oh, I've got this. I'm, I'm the one putting the training together. Of course, I'm like so solid on this belief triad, but I didn't quite have the results I wanted yet. So I had to ask myself like, Heather, what, what, where are we lacking here? And what I realized was I didn't have full 100% belief in my client. Oh, and what that looks like is number one, people are ready, willing, and able to pay no matter what your number. I don't yeah. care if your number is $150 or if your number is $5,000, you have to 100% believe that people are ready willing and able to pay and that yeah. you're in demand, they're out there. And also you have to believe that all of these are like interconnected, you know? Yeah. So it's not just like one separately. You have to believe that you will deliver photos to your client that your client will love. Yes. Like that's belief in your client that your and your client has belief in you. So it goes both ways. And if you believe that your photos are great and your client will love them, I 
promise you your client will love them independent of the quality yeah. of the image. What are your thoughts on that? The belief triad, I call it. I love this so much. I love this so much because I Thank think you. you're at like, at the, at the heart of it, for me, it's always been the belief in myself. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny how that does. It does trickle down into all the other things. Like you need to have the, that alignment. And when you do, like, that is where the magic happens. And I, I think that's brilliant. I love it so much. Thank you. Love thank it. you. And I, so um, I delivered this training inside of Elevate. And I had one photographer tell me she watched it like five or six times. And she said, every time I watched it, I shifted something. Mm. And then she comes back and says, I had my highest sale ever. And then another person said, I doubled my sales. And I like, and this stuff, it wasn't that there was some new fancy strategy or marketing plan. It was like instantaneous. Yeah. They just dropped in to this belief and they, they understood what the, and then there's some of us that are still working on like fully believing in ourselves. That's yep. totally fine. You know, let us help you yep. so that you can generate this belief in yourself and your product and service yeah. and your client. But if you don't have the results you want, then we just need to look at one of these areas yeah. and, you know, and always building on one another. Totally. I love that. It's so true. Cause there've been times where I'm like, I've got my belief in myself. I've got my belief in my client, but the product, mm. the, the, like, and it's like, I don't trust my print lab or I don't trust um, oh. the albums or I don't oh. trust that these are going to look the same as they do on my computer. So you hold back. Yes. Right. That's and, it. Right. So it's just, yes. it makes so much sense. Once you have Perfect all those example. in alignment, when you're, when you're confident mm -hmm. in all those areas, everything kind of comes together. Yeah. You put it that. all out there. Yeah. You're right. That's a great yeah. point. And when one of those is missing, you hold back. Yeah. Mm. I love that. Mm. Interesting. I love that. So are you ready for our lightning round? I am. Okay. Most luxurious vacation you've ever been on. Oh gosh. That's an interesting question. Can I ask you, like, how do you define luxurious? Oh. <sighs> That's a really good question, actually. No one has ever asked me that. How do I define luxury? Honestly, I love fancy. I'm I a fancy too. gal. I love <laughs> yeah. I love being spoiled. Like, I think we stayed at a really high-end hotel in Cancun and mm. at the Moon Palace a few years ago. And <gasps> oh just loved it. I've mm -hmm. been there. It was lovely. Oh right? my gosh. Yeah. Craig and I went there <laughs> yeah. before we decided to get pregnant with our daughter, who is now 20 years uh, old. I love it. I love it. That's crazy. Yeah. We went there a few years ago. Oh my gosh. And um, I think I do. I love being spoiled. I love like, we stayed at the penthouse in the Bellagio, um, which was really fancy. Yeah. And, sounds fancy. Yeah. It was really fancy and just like eating mussels. And I just love fancy stuff. I do. I'm a fancy girl. Right? I love that about you. <laughs> I can appreciate that. So a couple of years ago in 2018, our daughter turned 16. So we have this thing. We, uh, we have two children and um, Ella was turning 16 and we said to her, you can pick anywhere in the world you want to go. So we didn't, you're, we're not buying you a car. We're not giving you gifts, but you can pick a vacation wherever you would like to go. And she picked Italy. So she wanted to go to Rome. And so we planned this amazing three week vacation. Now I've got to say some parts of this vacation, I would not define as luxurious, <laughs> <laughs> but there was one one villa, we say, we stayed at this private villa in the oh, Tuscan countryside, yeah. and it was outside of all of the cities and towns, away from all the tours. It had this really fancy chef and this beautiful pool overlooking the mountains and the vineyards, and it was just amazing. And in that moment, I just felt like a million bucks, you know, mm. like this is just the most I'd amazing. Be like, thing I've ever. arrived, I've arrived. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. We had a private driver oh. for that that particular yeah. part of our trip, and. Um, got to do these tours and it was amazing. Now, listen, I, I want to balance that by saying some parts of this trip, like I mentioned a moment ago, were not exactly luxurious where you're like trekking through Rome or Florence in the back of a taxi that's dirty yeah. and you don't understand what's happening and it's confusion everywhere. But that portion of that vacation was really amazing. I love that. Oh, it's so good. What's your favorite movie? Favorite movie? Favorite movie. Well, one that stops me if I see it on TV all the time is The Princess Bride. I know every word of that movie. I've watched I'm it. I'm not like a witch. A I'm your wife. Yes. I'm not a witch. I say that. I'm not a witch. I'm your wife. That's great. Yeah. That's just a classic movie. I can just yeah. watch over and over. There's this one scene my husband all the time. He's like, anybody want a peanut? <laughs> anybody want a peanut? I know every word. I could, if somebody brings, if somebody says something in it, I can like relate it to the princess bride. It's uh, just, 
I fun. love it. I think that's mine too. That's so funny. I love oh, that. good. Good. <laughs> Oceans or mountains and why? Definitely oceans yeah. because sand and sun and warmth. So I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which I think is like second or third in gray days per year. Oh. Like we don't see a lot of sun in yeah. the summer. Yes, of course. But yeah. like um, this time of year, this is ironic that I'm saying this because it's actually sunny today, but usually in the spring, we just, it's a lot of gray and dreary days. Yeah. So I love, I love the mountains. I think they're beautiful and I love to visit, but the beach, oh my gosh. And a book on the beach sitting under an umbrella. Love it all day long. I love it. So good. What are you most grateful for in this season of life? That's, that's a challenging question because I wake up every day. This is the truth. I wake up every day thinking, oh my gosh, I am so grateful. I have mm -hmm. so much gratitude. Yeah. I've been married to my amazing husband for 24 years. We have two yeah. great kids. Um, business is good. I, my best business friend, Nicole Begley and I are growing our businesses together and we have mutual friends, you and I with her. And I just think, gosh, I'm, I don't like to use the word lucky because, you know, we've we worked, worked really hard, hard to yeah. get here, but, yeah. but I'm very, very grateful, grateful just for almost everything in mm -hmm. this season. It's just a really good time in my life right now. Love that. So where could our listeners learn more from you? I would love if you would check out the Flourish Academy podcast and you can go to flourish.academy slash podcast to see those episodes. But I also have a lot of photography training on the website and I just redid everything. Hey, can I ask you a mm -hmm. side note tech question? What platform are you using to deliver your courses right now? I think the WordPress. Oh, WordPress. Okay. So yeah. I have been using a plugin yeah. for WordPress. I'm now on Kajabi, yeah. Yeah. but um, I just recently redid everything from WordPress over yeah. Kajabi. And um, so if you go to flourish.academy slash podcast, you'll find those episodes and all of the trainings that we offer. I also have a YouTube channel with a ton of training mm -hmm. videos. So I would love if people could check that out. So good. Well, I love to end my interviews just with this last question. And it is, what are you currently curious about or artistically curious about? I artistically curious about, I'm curious about so many things. I love, so I, I read like crazy. I read all of the books, get me all of the books. I just want to learn and understand human potential and capacity and capability and helping people break through. So I love all of that type of mindset stuff. Um, from a photography standpoint, gosh, these mirrorless cameras to me are just so amazing and so, so fun. I have a partnership with a local camera store, YM Cameras, close to me, and we work together. And so I get to play with a lot of new gear. And that's so fun. I, I'm, I'm actually a mechanical engineer by trade. So <gasps> technically, I love all of that gear stuff. Yeah. So I, and, and to be honest, I consider myself like a like a tech person before a creative artist type person. Yeah. I have myself in, in that category. So I love new gear. I just love learning. I love teaching. I yeah. love this. I love meeting new people. I, I don't, I'm just, you know, I'm, I walk around all the time saying I'm just open. I'm just open to learning and creating and opportunities and then things just happen. I love it so much. Well, Heather, thank you so much for joining me today. I know I'm going to actually have to invite you back. This was such an incredible conversation and I know our listeners are just going to love you. Thank you. Oh, my beautiful friends, I hope you loved this conversation just as much as I did. I am sending you so much of my light and my love today and every single day. We'll see you next time.